about threading up uh, a lace making card or template so that you can get started with the lace. So what I've done is I've drawn this uh, lace shape on here. I want a point lace with a square foundation line. And what I've done is I've just set them up with just a plain like quadrant grid, both regular and diagonal. And then a point goes on each top. Now I've left a gap between each one because there's portions of lace that actually extend off of where this edge is going to be. So I've planned ahead for that. And then what'll happen is I'll thread this up, I'll make the lace, and then I'll shift it over and I'll thread this up again and attach it to the old lace as I work. And then that's how I'll do them three at a time to create the yardage that I want. So. So to begin, I have number 20 white crochet cotton here, and I'm gonna pull off a relatively long piece of it. I have a number five sewing needle because the eye needs to be big enough to take the thread, which is quite thick. And you really need to use a thick, strong thread for these foundation stitches, and you can see as you look at the card, you can see that I've punched all of these sets of holes all over it at every intersection and in the middle of each long float. And I'll use all of these stitches to help um, secure the girding of the threads as they work underneath. So, so I'll just start in one corner here. I'll just put the needle through. And then in order to thread the base, I'm just gonna work in a zigzag form and then I'll come up to the points and I'll work across those. And I just wanna thread them up as quickly as I can. After reviewing that footage, I realized that it was um, a really terrible angle to see what I'm doing. So I decided to uh, move things around a little bit so that you can see better. What I forgot to mention in that last segment is that uh, the card and the mylar are put together and what I usually do is I just quickly stitch around the perimeter with the sewing machine. Uh, you can also stitch it by hand. I, I've done that many, many times. Uh, it is important that the edges be rounded though because the corners will catch your thread and really slow you down. So I'm on my one, two, three, I'm on the fourth line of stitching now, working my way across the three points, of the three central squares of these points. This is something that happens a lot with the cotton threads because you're doing so many stitches, it gets really kinked. So I usually just like sp spin the needle to untwist it in my fingers and I'll do it uh, somewhat automatically uh, depending on how much lace I'm making at the time, I'll get really get into the habit of as soon as I draw, I'll just give it a little twist to help pull out some of the kink. Um, this is quite possibly my least favorite part of making the needle lace, this, this whole moment of threading up the card, but it's very necessary if you want to make um, a lace that's easily repeated. Uh, I like using these templates just because um, it, it also makes the lace a little more crisp. When I work freehand, I just, I haven't had enough practice working freehand with the lace to make um, the details and motifs as consistent as I can make them when I'm working on a template. I'm reaching the end of the line for this thread right now, and I want to tie off so I'm finding my last set of holes here. And then I'm going to flip this over. You can see all these stitches that go all the way through. And then I'm just going to do some half hitches, uh, which are also uh, plain buttonhole stitches along one of the floats on the back. And I'm gonna do a bunch of them because I want this to be really secure. I don't want any risk of it coming unstitched. And then I'm going to cut it. 
And now I can unwind some more thread and I will work up the points. Okay, so I'm working my way up the point here. Started with the points corner tack stitch at each of these little intersections here. And uh, I'm working around. And what I'm going to do is on this one right here, I'm just gonna dash into the middle and complete these two tack stitches that I need right here. If I don't, then I have a really long jump between the end of the stitching along the outside of these points and uh, where I need to be to work my way into the next point. So I've gone from here into the centers and then I'm coming back out and then I can just finish around and I'll do the same thing around each one. Uh, you may need to take breaks at some point during this process because I'll tell you what, holding this card and holding everything in tension right now, you know, and I have hands that are skilled from decades of doing this work and it's just cramping. It's always cramping. So it's important to make sure you take breaks, that you moderate your hand position so that you're not stuck in one place for too long. Uh, you know, as I get older, I find that my hands respond less and less well to the stresses of doing this work. So I'm trying to be kind to them because I want to be capable of doing these pieces of lace for as long as possible before my hands give out. And one day they will. May not be any time soon, but they will. So I'm thinking ahead to that reality already as I'm working. Now that my card is completely threaded, I've got the template all threaded up, I realize that I've got a very blank and neutral template right here. If you know what your design is going to be, like after we do this practice run, you know what your design is going to be, you can always draw it completely on the card beneath. I um, decided that these lines would be a little bit too distracting for teaching the how-to, so I left mine really blank, and this way we can focus on just the execution of the stitches and the order of operations. So now that this is ready to go, uh, I have my number six needle. Now I want a smaller needle, so I'm going to a number six, uh, and it's threaded up with a strand of linen, and this is about a 50 to a 60, perhaps, a 62 linen. It's thin, it's small, it's very sturdy. Uh, this one was given to me by a weaver friend of mine and I have inquired about the um, ordering information. So as soon as I have that, I'll add it to this video uh, in a ticker along the bottom. But uh, for the very beginning, there's two different ways we can do this. As a beginner, I found it really difficult to kind of know what I wanted to do. So I wanted to, I just knotted the thread and brought it up from the back to start. Now, ideally, you don't want any of the surface lace threads to come through from the back. Uh, but when I do things now, I just leave the tail and then as I work over it, uh, then I'll cut it off. But since you all are most likely beginners, I'm just going to make a nice fat knot in this linen thread that knot will get cut off later when we're removing the lace. And then I'll bring it up through one of the holes of the tack stitches. So the next thing that I'll do then is I'll start running my needle underneath the tack stitches. And I really want the needle between the stitch and the card. I don't want to go through the thread of the tack stitch at all. And I will proceed to go under every single one to the next upright. So then as I get to here, instead of going all the way down and around in one long continuous, I'm going to do this in a series of squares. So I'll bring this needle up through and around, and I'll just frame the square of this particular area, okay?
Okay, and then I'm back at the beginning now. I've run all the way around and I'm going to keep going. Generally, when you're setting up the framework itself, you want at least two passes under all of this so that there's two lines of the linen thread underneath everything. In this instance, I also want to throw the center. So now that I'm coming across here, I'm gonna throw the center up, the center of the square. So I'm gonna come up, and again, just stitching through these tack stitches. But now as I'm at the top, I wanna to make sure that this thread is wrapped around my first pass. So I'm going to go underneath both the previous pass and the tack stitch. I hope you can see this very well. So I'm going under this thread and under the tack stitch from um, the initial threading of the card. And once I have that drawn through, then I'll go right back down to center. And when I reach center, now I'm gonna go out to the sides and do exactly the same thing. So here I am coming out to the side I'm going to pass under the first line of stitch and the tack stitch, and then go back the way I came. And then to the other side, underneath both, and then back to center. And this is a great way to start understanding this whole concept of out and then back in to zero, and out and then back into zero. And by zero, I mean a center spot or a beginning location. So now I've gone up and down and out and back and out and back, and now I'm gonna go my final pass back down. We will throw the diagonals as we're actually taking stitches because they will get worked in actual designs as we're uh, making them. So I don't want to do that yet. Now I'm back down to the bottom. I'll come here. And I've already got this one wrapped around. What I'll do is I'll take my needle under my original pass through the loop that I made when I wrapped around that, when I threw that center. And then I'll follow the path around the rest of the way. And when I get down to the bottom again, then I will go straight across the bottom and I'll then throw everything for the second square. Okay. So now you'll notice I have three lines of thread along the bottom and that's fine. I actually don't mind if the exterior most edge of my lace is slightly heavier than the rest Catch of it. That. So this already has two passes of thread because we did that twice already. So now we're along the bottom, we're gonna come up, we're gonna come here, we're going to lock into this corner. We're gonna go back the other way, we're gonna throw our centers and then we're gonna come back down here and we'll end up here. And about that time, I should be I should be running out of thread at some point, and I'll show you how I switch to a fresh one. So I'm ready to lock into this point. So I'm gonna go under the tack stitch and under both lines of my previous pass. I'm gonna come back and then work my way back to the middle of this one. I'm going under the tack stitch and under the first pass, and now I'm going to turn the work and I'm gonna make my way down. And I've gone under the tack stitch and under the original foundation thread. See how, like, as I'm working, I'm just turning this around constantly. There's really no need for me to keep everything in the same orientation. So now I've got this I've just locked into the connecting point on this square, and I'm coming back along, I'm slipping under, coming here. 
Now this tack stitch crosses, but it's a little big. So what you wanna do is make sure that you don't pull too tight and drag that thread out of alignment. You wanna make sure that it stays where it needs to be. Since my thread's running out, I'm just gonna plunge through one of my holes to the back and tuck it out of the way, just like that. So its little tail is hanging out back here. And that's just convenient because then it doesn't get, it doesn't get caught in the works as I'm trying to actually stitch the lace later. So let me re- I'm gonna go under the tack stitch. I'm gonna go under all of this, under the next tack stitch. And then I'm going to work the point again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back around. One, two, three, four. And here I am going down the center again. up under everything over down the side throwing across making sure that I'm wrapped around the foundation threads at the perimeter and under the tack stitch. And then finally, just one more pass around the exterior. this tag stitch onto the next point. Now after all of that, we have returned back to our original starting point.